Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the bullpen. Hey, my sweet babies, I'm Monique. And I'm Sydney. And we're coming to y'all today to let you know we're standing with all the unions that are striking right now. And we have a story that we must share of our own with the community. Countess Vaughn and I did a show called The Parkers. The Parkers has now been on air for 24 years. And they're trying to convince us through our ownership of the show that we made absolutely no money. And it's baffling being that when you have a conversation with the executive producers and they allude to the fact that the show in its entirety, five years, was made for under $70 million. It went out of production in 2004, but by 2009, we see profit participation statements that show the program made over $700 million, but yet was in a close to a billion, if not a billion dollar deficit. So what we're asking you CBS is, can you please treat these two black women fairly? When our brother Dave Chappelle, who ironically had a deal with CBS, said he signed the deal out of desperation and it was a bad deal. They were able to go back and do the right thing and they made that deal fair and they paid Dave Chappelle what he rightfully deserved. What we're asking you, CBS, don't pay us any more, but don't pay us any less. And the reason why we're having this conversation out loud for the community to hear is this. We see the numbers and they still don't want to pay. What will happen to you when you don't even know the numbers exist? So we're asking you, and when we say community, we mean community as in the ones that's fighting for equality. Will you stand with us? CBS, will you treat us fairly? We love y'all for real, my babies. I've said many times on this show that selecting certain people to do fairly while not doing fairly to others means you simply lack principle. We need a principled approach for fairness to be equitable for everybody. On the program, I have none other than award-winning actress and comedian Monique and husband, executive producer, manager, president of Hicks Media Inc. Sydney Hicks, thank you both for being on the show. Uh, we go way back, and obviously, I advocate with you on this issue. How are you both? Wonderful. Thanks for having us, Dr. Richie. Wonderful. Always good. Always good. Let's talk about the reality of what is happening now. And Monique, I'm going to go to you first. As it stands today, can you give us an update as to the issue with CBS? And since you made that proclamation on social media, have, has anyone contacted you from there? Not as of today, no one has contacted us from there. Okay. No. All right. Um, and right now, how much money are we saying that, I know it's an estimate, how much money are we saying they probably owe based on the current estimate of what they made? Well, when you have a show that has made, we'll say north of $2 billion. Wow. And Countess Vaughn and I together owns a very small percentage. We would say we're due millions mm -hmm. of dollars, millions of dollars. Tens of millions. Yes. Okay. Sydney, all right. So explain to us, especially to me, because I don't know how the design works. I know that you said uh, you all can actually see the numbers, but the way they offset it is by claiming that there's a deficit or a debt that will offset the profit ratio. And I know a little bit about that because that's what Donald Trump did. Uh, on his taxes to show that he had a loss uh, by basically lying about uh, the debt incurred or the write-offs that he took. So is that a similar scenario here, Sydney? What I'll say is this specifically, okay. uh, they can show you numbers, but the specifics as to where the numbers are going, that's not adding up and it's not visually. So you can say you made $100 and show a number of $200 in deficit. If you don't have a definition as to why there is a deficit of $200, mm. all you have is it's a $200 deficit. And it continues on and on and on and on. 
The thing that people don't understand as well, we had the privilege of speaking to Judge Joe Brown, Mm -hmm. who also had this same dynamic with CBS, who is a a very uh, well-versed and knowledgeable attorney who had the uh, legal uh, uh, wording in his contract stated to to a T, if you will. Mm -hmm. He still didn't get his money based upon what he shared with us, which means a lot of people will say, you need to do this and you need to do that. In the words of, I believe it was Stalin, who said, it does not matter how many votes you get. What matters is who counts the votes. So it does not matter the language in your contract. What matters is who are the people surrounding that contract that will decide whether you get paid or whether someone else does not. Monique, as you continue to um, say these things publicly, um, I can go down the tapestry of things you've said publicly and you've been proven to be correct, uh, to be right. Even with this, uh, this is coming obviously on the heels of a shift in Hollywood where Hollywood is saying um, there has to be fair practices because the individuals who are the artists behind the product, who are the catalyst behind the whole industry, They're the ones who get the least amount of respect when it comes to the economic payout. And so that shift is happening. You've been talking about this for years that it needed to happen many, many years ago. So as it stands today, what should we know about uh, the operation of how CBS contracted with you all during the very popular program? uh, And what should they engage in today or what should they do to remedy the situation now? Well, when we first got started, you're going on the counsel of your attorney, of your manager, your agents. So you're when they say this is a good deal, well, you don't know who to challenge that with because you're brand new to a place called Hollywood. Right. So in the very beginning, the deal was what it was. That's the deal I signed. I'm not complaining about the deal I signed. I'm saying Pay us for the deal we signed up for. Because what you're told is when you do get to this place, if you have ownership of your show and your show goes into syndication, you don't have to work ever again if you don't choose to, because that's how much it generates in syndication. So that's what you're banking on. You're you're not knowing that all of these turns and twists and things are going to get thrown in You're told, listen, if the show goes into syndication, this is the percentage you get. The show makes money. This is what you get paid. That's what you're banking on. That's the advice you've you've gone on. That's what you've been told. So to get to a place where they now want to convince us after the show has been on the air for 24 years, and it actually went into syndication, Dr. Ritchie, while we were still in production. Mm -hmm. Now, because you're green to Hollywood, no one came to me and said, the Parkers is in syndication. Wow. And it was funny because when Callis and I had a conversation, she said, you know, when Buffy the Vampire went into syndication, they gave her a car. When we went into syndication, they gave me a bracelet. I said, well, Countess, I got you beat because I didn't even know we went into syndication for them to give me anything. So it's so much information you're not given. You're not told. And that's why we have to stand up and say, listen, Just pay us what we signed up for. I think that point is so important. And I want to echo that point again. I'm going to go to Sydney for my next question. Uh, You have ownership or equity into the product itself. You are giving that by way of a contractual agreement. And many times they provide that in lieu of additional salary payment. So you have an equitable contract that will live in uh, perpetuity unless you sign it over. You all have that ownership. So there's no request to give more money or money that doesn't exist or money that was not agreed to. You're saying, I'm an owner. I should have an equitable interest in the profit sharing. So, Sydney, how do you enforce something like this contractually against a major corporation like CBS when you just told us you got a guy who was, who was, you know, had a deal with CBS? He's an attorney. (laughs) He went to law school and Passed the bar, thought his contract was solid. How do you enforce um, such what what is seemingly uh, possibly a breach of contract? Well, 
ever so humbly, you're asking the multi, uh, multi, multi million dollar question. That is the reason why uh, not, not only is uh, systemic cheating and racism real, but when you get an opportunity to see what took place, as you uh, just spoke about with the strike, 57 percent of the Screen Actors After a members are white. 65% of the Writers Guild of America, they're white. 85% of the executives are white, but yet they are still out there striking, which means that if they're doing that to individuals who happen to be white, and we speak in reference to privilege, well, what happens to individuals that are black? So when we use the term enforcing, and forcing is an extremely powerful word that we, again, for 400 years have not quite been in a position to necessarily enforce. So the next best thing we can do is bring attention to these matters and hope that the community at large, not just the black community, but the white community, when folks say we are one, it is a trickle down effect whereby if you're experience, experiencing hard times as a Caucasian person in the United States of America, it's going to trickle down to us. And if it trickles down to us, it's going to go back to you as well. So it's one of those things to answer your question. You can't enforce it in a way in which you're the midnight commandant and you're going to come in and you're going to shut it down. The only thing we can do is what we're doing right now, or you can do what typically happens in Hollywood. We are quiet. We stay uh, afraid because it's an embarrassing situation to many people to find out you're owed something, but you can't get it. You know, and I think that's a, a powerful and important point that many people will stay silent because they're afraid of how they may be perceived for the next gig or the next opportunity that could come their way. And I think these executives, they play on that. They know that that's a calculation that many will make before engaging in a decision to come after such a large and powerful company. Um, Monique, you have been uh, willing to say what you authentically believe. Uh, and obviously, you have said it again. But I looked at that thread. There are a whole lot of folks saying the same thing. There seems to be a chorus of people um, who did major scale work with CBS to minor scale work with CBS who are saying this company did not do us fairly either. So there seems to be a collective uh, gathering here because of your proclamation. Is, is there some, some sort of effort perhaps uh, to get more people on record about the treatment that this conglomerate has engaged in against others who have contracted with CBS? You know, Dr. Ritchie, people just need to speak up. Mm -hmm. And today we have the platforms where people yes. can tell their stories. You just need to speak up because what happens is oftentimes when one speak, two speak, three speak, four speak, and it just keeps going. There are times where you may speak up and you have to stand alone. And then you'll then see, okay, well, years later, now everyone is saying what you may have been saying. But it is just for people to be unafraid to speak up. You have to be, in our humble opinion, fearless in this life. Because if not, it'll eat you up in a way that you're already gone. If you're fearful in your walk, you've already left because now someone or something has so much control over you and so much invisible power that it will make you be silent and suffer inside. And we just say, speak up. Very well said. And uh, for full disclosure, um, I used to work for CBS as, C as CBS Radio. Um, I'm a political analyst for a CBS News affiliate. Uh, that would never stop me from telling the truth about CBS when CBS is wrong, period. Uh, it's really not difficult when you know what your true north is. Um, Sydney, you're in this position as um, owner of Hicks Media, manager, right? So you're you're the person that if a, if a new contract comes or if they try to mend it in some way, uh, you would review that. You would say, okay, I'm I'm seeing you know possible light here. Are you all willing to take a meeting with CBS if a meeting is called? Absolutely. I mean, listen, 
there's no way that you can work things out without communication. The reason why we are saying to Bob Backish, the CEO of CBS, we would love to have a conversation with you because when you're in a position such as him, there are individuals that are going to suggest you just stay quiet. That is the evasive maneuver. If you notice, Tyler Perry has not come out from, uh, you would think it was Groundhog Day and it's going to be six more months of, you know, winter because he's not yet come out to say, I'm sorry to Monique. Oprah Winfrey, very similar. They do not come out. This is a, an invasive technique. So they get taught that. But what we're saying is, and trying to implore upon people, there is an awakening that's transpired. And people are starting to uh, feel the need to be unencumbered by their fear. And if you have fear, the fear you should have is, what's going to happen to you if you stay quiet? That's right. See, you've given them no uh, reason to change their way of being and way of doing by staying quiet. In fact, you've emboldened them. So what we're suggesting is to Bob Backish, who was a family man with daughters and a wife, think about it if your wife went out and she made a project that four years after it was over, it made a billion dollars. And that's four years after it's over in 2009. We're now in 2023. So for it to have made $2 billion is not unrealistic. So how can a project that was, you got two comedians, I mean, two, uh, you got a comedian and an actress at the end of their run together were making just above $100,000. Hmm. Just above the, the end numbers on that show were 3.6 million when it was over in its finale. So when you have that end, you have an agent who I had the opportunity of meeting when I came on board that Monique fired years ago. She said, I got to let you go. I love you, but you're racist. You're part of the problem. Okay. Now people be like, you're playing the race card until 14 years later, she called back and said, you know what, Monique, you were right. I was ingratiated to the system. I was mm -hmm. afraid of the system and I couldn't protect you in the way that I needed to. And because of that, I had to talk to some people and now she's in the DEI world. Wow. But at the end of the day, if you have a person telling you that you're not protected, this is where we sit from a lack of protection. Yes. 24 years later. That implicit um, bias or implicit racism, I explain to my college students often, it's just as dangerous as hyperaggressive bias and hyperaggressive racism. When it's implicit, the person is unaware but engaged in the same action and likely intentionally ignorant of the reality of their current circumstance and social construct. Uh, Monique, uh, we're running out of time, but I would like you to tell those who are watching Indisputable, um, what would you like them to do? How can they be part of the effective change that's taking place right now? Just what I said, speak up and speak out when you know it is unfair. Because if you don't, what happens when it's your turn? What happens when it's your moment? that you're not being paid fairly or you're being mistreated. So when you know it's wrong, be unafraid to say it loudly, this is wrong. So if that means people say, listen, CBS, y'all got to do something because it's not just Monique and Countess Vaughn. It was Dave Chappelle. It is this That's one, right. it is that one, it is this one. So are we going to stand by and watch our two sisters be mistreated? Because it is generational money that we're owed. It is. We're older women now. So are we going to stand by and continue to support and watch and do all these things knowing that people are still being mistreated? So we're just saying to our community and the community of the people for equality, at what point do you say we must take a stand? Because when it's my turn, I would want someone to take that stand with me as well. Very well said. Very well said. Um, the universe rewards courage. Never forget that. Onique Sidney, thank you both. I appreciate you so much. Thank you for being transparent and authentic as always. Thank you, Dr. Rich. Thank you, brother. Absolutely.